Hello, my name is Holly Plancha. I'm a nurse at Wilmot Kern Medical Center in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Thank you for tuning in for my TED Talk. Today I'll be discussing exercise design and development by using gamification and escape room concepts. For our disclosures, there are no relevant financial relationships to disclose relating to the content of this activity, and the views expressed in this presentation are those of myself and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Department of Defense to help Defense Health Agency or the Government of the United States of America. I'm going to start by saying that I had the opportunity to attend the IMSH conference in January of 2023. If any of you have the opportunity to attend one of these conferences, highly recommend it. It was an amazing experience. I was very interested in the presentations from institutions that were already doing escape rooms and gamification integrated with their simulation center. My department is very interested in putting an escape room together for our nursing skills fair and for our use with our new grad nurses. So I use this presentation as an opportunity to do more research and find out about just a little more. Currently, we have not run an escape room. I'm not to set one up. Um, so all the information presented is theoretical and we're, we're building our own thing. So what is gamification in serious games and why should we consider using them? Gamification integrates gaming elements such as rewards and prizes into non-game simulation scenarios. Series games are games that are built around training content. This provides a risk-free environment where learners can make mistakes and learn from them. Gamification and serious games can be used together and can be used with medical simulation. In the rest of the presentation, I use these terms fairly interchangeably uh, as, long, as well with uh, the term escape rooms. So how does this relate to MS? Serious games engage younger learners in the adult learning model and promotes reflection, foster engagement, and engages them in problem solving. This can also be a very useful as a team building experience. Serious games are also a creative technique for developing simulation as part of a curriculum or to meet learning objectives in a fun and engaging way. So application, we're gonna start with the basics. To start building our escape room, we need to create our learning objective. What do we want to achieve through this escape room? We want to identify our audience. So who are our target learners? What is their level of competency? What is their job? Are they nurses, are they physicians, beginners, proficient experts? Figure out where and when we're going to hold the simulation. So whether it's going to be in our sim lab, uh, on one of the floors, when we're going to do it, how many learners are going to be there? Are we going to do multiple sessions? How many facilitators do we need? When is our dry run going to be? We definitely need a dry run to make sure that our room makes sense and that um, our puzzles are obvious enough and that it can be done in the time frame we want it to be done. And then we're going to go ahead and start developing our escape room. We need to identify the equipment. We need to identify what either mannequins or task trainers disposable equipment, what rooms we're doing, if we've got the the locks and all those kind of equipment that we want, and then map out the puzzles and clues that we are going to do. We'll talk about that uh, in a couple slides in more detail. Then we actually build the environment. So put all of our puzzles together, put our clues together, and, and build our room. Once it's built, it's really important to do that dry run to, to work out some of the kinks before our learners go through it. Then we're going to invite our learners to come. Now, the previous is going to be really important to make sure that they understand uh, what is expected of them, what some of the clue, not clues, but the keywords are, if they need a clue, if, they, uh, if there's a real-world incident that needs addressed, those kind of safety things. Um, and then that execute the escape room. So part of this is going to also include is our facilitator going to be in the room or do we have a setup where we can have someone that's observing from outside of the room so those learners are really in there by themselves, which is, I think, preferred. And then, of course, our debrief, which is one of the most important things to make sure that we hit those learning objectives and still have fun doing it. To simulation and beyond. These are some technology resources that uh, we were provided at the conference. So the thinglink.com can create a virtual space. Uh, apparently you can just go in with your phone, 
take a video of your space and then this creates a virtual space that you can then build your sim in your escape room inside that virtual space. Um, so you can use it on the computer, you can use it off-site. So that was really interesting. Um, I haven't played around with it too much yet. Other technology in space, so encouraging people to use their cell phones. If your organization has tablets that they use for um, interactions, and then the use of QR codes to take them to clues or to websites or to resources uh, to help answer questions. Really, the takeaway that I got from, from all the research that I've done is that escape rooms are really limited only by your imagination and creativity. This slide has some examples of puzzles or of things that you can use to create your escape room. So on the top left, you'll see different color-coded locks. Uh, there's also locks, right, these ones all have three-digit combinations, but you can get locks with various different numbers of combinations, so you've got some variety of what numbers you can use to uh, solve your puzzles. The recommendation was to not use like a left-right combination dial because some people have a, lot, a hard time uh, actually successfully putting in a combination to those types of locks. Uh, on the top right, you've got a black light revealing a hidden uh, message. In the middle, there's a popsicle stick cipher, so some organizing the sticks in some way reveals the a message or a code. There's also the cipher cryptex in the bottom left corner where you put in the correct code and it opens up to reveal a message. Uh, and then the right hand lower side is a uh, the key locks that people real estate agents use on their doors that you can again do a combination that opens up and that can be a message or something else inside that box. Um, there's all sorts of ideas again right the these are just a smattering it's really limited only by your imagination. This slide is an example of mapping an escape room. So the scenario that I was working with uh, provided to the learner would cue them in on the patient situation, and the scenario is an ALS response. So part of mapping is deciding if your puzzles have to be completed one by one in order, or if there are multiple clues that can be worked independently. This decision can also depend on the size of the group and how long you want the escape room to take, or like if you want them to work physically on a team with things. But if we've got a larger group, it's, it seems like it'd be better to have multiple puzzles so that people can talk to each other and, and work on different things and come together as a group to, to move on. For my example, uh, puzzle one and puzzle two can be solved independently of each other, but both need to be done before puzzle three can be done. I've also considered down in the bottom left what resources will be in the room as references to assist the learners, and I would need to create a clue for each puzzle and then have a the keyword to request a clue as part of the pre-brief. Escape rooms used today and beyond. So this can be used in educational environments, continuing education, skills fair, team building, potentially in virtual environments. So really again, the, the limit is only your imagination. And the use, I think we'll see it used a lot more to create fun and engaging learning environments. These are some resources that I got from the IMSH conference, uh, the lockpaperscissors.com, as well as this Google site for sample escape rooms, just to kind of uh, help you think of things and help um, learn what some of your options are for puzzles. Thank you for listening to my tech talk. I hope this has uh, inspired you to integrate escape rooms or, game, or even gamification or serious games into your simulation centers. And if you've done one of these and have some advice, I'd love to hear it. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day.